Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about why you should move to the city and I'm going to be drawing this. So I want to talk about a topic today that I've wanted to address for uh, quite a while now. And I've been trying to figure out exactly how to say it, uh, but I've also been concerned that it was going to be a little bit too out there. But after having had this channel for a while, but after having had this channel for a while, I'm starting to think about this message in context of some of the other uh, messages I've, I've had on this channel. Um, and I really think that it, it kind of fits. I've talked about the idea of lifestyle and about how you live your life affects your ability to make art. And I think this is a factor in making art that uh, is really not appreciated enough. One of the passions I've developed over the last several years is an interest in the connection between art, place, and community. Throughout my life, I've thought about the things I needed to do to become a better artist. Uh, most of my focus has been internal. What, school, uh, what skills do I need to learn? What is the point of view I need? And what are the tools I can exploit to be a successful artist. Um, and you're going to find plenty of YouTube videos that answer those questions, but not as many that try to answer two essential questions that any artist needs to consider. Where do I need to be and who do I need to be with? I mean, I think I did think about this at a certain level, but I don't think I really knew how important it was. That was until I stumbled onto an article by Ed Glazer in The Atlantic, which led me to read The, the Triumph of the City. And this changed the direction of my life forever. Um, Ed Glazer is an economist, and he looks specifically at the economics of cities. And Triumph basically just talks about the city as an engine of innovation, which also includes art. Um, I mean, it's kind of a matter of simple geometry. When you put lots of people closer together, they collaborate better and innovate better, and the best ideas rise to the top. That's why you always hear about famous artists from the past rubbing shoulders together in, in cafes in, in big cities. I mean, Picasso, Hemingway, the Fitzgeralds, and Buñuel weren't all hanging out because they each individually went through the phone book and tried to connect with other artists. They went to the city because they knew the city was the place to find other artists. Their work helped them to rise to the top, and sooner or later, they were all rubbing shoulders. Um, so reading uh, Triumph of the Cities just really struck a chord. Even though I had never been able to put my finger on it before, I knew that I wanted to be part of a community of artists in some form or another, and the places I was living in just didn't serve that need. Um, this idea of, you know, Tolkien and Lewis with Inklings or, you know, the Ramones and Talking Heads at CBGB had always really excited me as much as making art, but I didn't understand the connection to place and that the city is where those communities happen. And some of you may think that the internet has changed this fact, but the demographic data shows otherwise. The trend over the last 200 years has been a trend of urbanization, and the trend is continuing. People are continuing to move closer together because the benefits to every aspect of life is so abundantly clear. So I'm gonna make two appeals to you today, and the first one is a general one. Think about moving to the city, or at the very least, closer to the city. Not only will you be a better artist if you do so, but if you are willing to put in the work, you will be able to contribute to a community, maybe a movement. If you've stuck with me so far, you might have this image in your head of moving to New York or San Francisco or Austin or any of the other handful of highly desirable cities out there. This, so the second appeal I would make is that you find a city that needs you. And this is kind of where the title of the video comes in. I stole it from Ryan Terry, who is a faculty member of the Incremental Development Alliance which is a group of developers who are trying to do with real estate development what we should be doing with art. Um, the actual quote is, Brooklyn doesn't need your ass. Um, you already know the big cities where all the action is happening. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie to you, there's an economic and artistic benefit to being in those places. But more and more it's coming at a cost, and a cost that's just too high for most people. I just read an article by Richard Florida as I was writing this where he talks about how we are facing a worldwide housing shortage, primarily in these highly desirable cities around the globe, and it's getting impossibly expensive for artists that don't have trust funds to live in those cities. And this is the problem that uh, Glazer points out as well. For cities to do their job, 
They need to be affordable so that we can get more people in the game competing and innovating. And housing prices are just creating this huge barrier to entry. And the truth is that high demand means that you're really not needed there either. Everyone is already flooding there. They've got their cultural needs more than met. But there may well be other places that can benefit more from your creativity where you can get a better deal as well. And I feel like there's this uh, zeitgeist emerging in response to this kind of world is flat type of way of looking at the world that many people much smarter than me are pointing out the wisdom of returning to a local focus. And um, I don't think this means nationalism, although I think nationalism is, is driven by the same instinct, just that its, its focus is misdirected. I think it means returning to the old hippie adage of think globally, act locally. The novelty of the internet is starting to wear off. It's still inarguably the most powerful means of transmitting information we've ever invented, but it's time to stop pretending that it can do things that it can't do. And one of the things it can't do is make space obsolete. It can't make up for local culture, local needs, and face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, with all that being said, I want you to look around you. There's very likely a city not too far from you. It may not be the biggest city in the world, but it likely was built before World War II, and if you're lucky, it still has streets mostly built on a grid pattern. I mean, it really could just be the vestiges of like a legit main street with the buildings still close together and without parking lots in front of everything, but maybe it at least has something to start with. This is likely the place that can be the most benefit to you and where you can make the biggest difference. Chances are, if you're in the US, this was a city that was abandoned post-World War II. Look it up on Wikipedia. If it has demographic information, and if there is a graph of those demographics, you will most likely see a dip in its growth around the middle of the last century as everyone fled to the suburbs. That tide has started to turn back the other way, where people are starting more and more to move back to city centers. And there's an opportunity to be part of a movement to rebuild your city, to make it a place worth giving a damn about, wherever that may be. It's very likely already started, and it's going to continue without you but won't be as great if you're not a part of it. I think all of us grew up with the idea, the very seductive idea that we could change the world, that we could create something that could change the world and that the best and brightest minds and the greatest talent should be focused on changing the world at a global level. But I think there's a lot of wisdom in starting to say, let's focus the attentions of the greatest minds and the greatest talents on making local places great. And your work may not as be as widespread, but it could be just if not more dramatic of a difference to that place, to your local place. And I'm not gonna proselytize uh, a certain idea without putting my money where my mouth is. Um, and I haven't made this plea without having already tried to live my life in accordance with my professed values. Not long ago after reading Glazer's book, my wife and I moved to a neighborhood in Salt Lake City We've got less space, more work to do to fix up our house, but we have discovered the magic of living near a city center. I've been able to bike to work and in my children's school. Um, I can bike to go shopping, which means we only have one car. I've been able to become a part of a number of thriving, engaging communities. I'm part of a group of artists that gets together every Tuesday night to draw. Speaking of which, if you're ever in Salt Lake City, you are more than welcome to join us. Just give me a holler. I've served as a member of my community council for the last four years where I've had a chance to connect with so many brilliant, sincere people working to make their community a better place. And I work at a co-working space where I interact with an entirely separate group of artists from my Dronic group that are equally as interesting, engaging, and ambitious. And that's not to mention all of the leisure time activities that you have access to in the city. Having options in Netflix is a wonderful thing. Honestly, you could still live in the suburbs and still do lots of this stuff but the cost to do it if you live in the city is orders of magnitude less expensive. It sincerely breaks my heart anytime I hear of one of my artist friends moving further away from the city. Um, but, you know, I get it. I understand the siren call of the mini mansion. I have been lured by that same call in the past. I just think we overestimate the benefit of granite countertops and underestimate the misery of commuting. The suburbs just aren't where artists belong. Just try to imagine Dali cursing behind a steering wheel or Andy Warhol mowing his lawn. 
artists belong in rundown coffee shops arguing over obscure ideas or in commandeered warehouses making art out of nothing. So that's what I'm going to ask you. Come be my neighbor. It's not going to be without risk. You may take my advice and it may turn out to be a catastrophic failure. So, so buyer beware. Um, but art has always been about risk. And for you, this may be the risk that's right for you. And this could be the choice that could forever determine your future and the future of the places that matter most. So some things to chew on. Are you thinking of moving to the city? Um, if not, why not? I'd love to hear your thoughts either way. Uh, any questions or comments, you know where to leave them. Please like this video. Please subscribe. We'll talk to you next time.